Epic. Epic! Epic Statue One speedruns of statistics! Brian Stevens! Versus Chapter Randomness! Begin! When it comes to randomness, there's a lot to talk about here with just two things on the review. What does randomness mean? Now, randomness is something statisticians use as a tool. That's important to understand right there. We love randomness. You know. So when it comes to randomness, we use it as a tool to do two things. One, take random samples. And we talk about this in other chapters where we can take random samples and we can use randomness. Randomly select individuals in the population by numbering all individuals and then selecting them randomly is a simple random sample. So we love randomness for this. We can also perform simulations. Now, what is a simulation? A simulation is a way of taking a real world event and using randomness to generate it. And we see this all the time, especially in video games, you may have heard the term RNG. RNG stands for random number generation. Now we don't put that on the test, but it is something we see all the time, especially if you play video games. Maybe you're trying to get a special item in a video game and it has a one in 1000 chance of appearing and it's RNG whether or not you get that item. What the video game is doing in the background is it has a list of numbers. It has numbers maybe zero through 999. Why would it be zero through 999? Well, a lot of times when we use random number generation, we might want to use three digit numbers. So with three digit numbers right here, zero, zero through 99999, you can do three digit random number generation and you actually have a thousand numbers. So using these random numbers right here, we could actually simulate getting an item in a video game. Now, this would actually be a lot to simulate right here, but let's do our own simulation with something a lot smaller. Let's say you wanna play scratch off tickets. Now always gamble at your own risk, but a lot of times we like to use things like lottery and probability to talk about simulations right here. And let's see, if you have a 20% chance of winning on a scratch off ticket, then how could we use random numbers to generate lottery tickets to see if you win on a scratch off ticket? Well, first off, we need to choose our random numbers. Let's use zero through nine. If you notice, these are 10 numbers. Just think about these as one through 10, but moved over one direction. So zero through nine is the same as one through 10. And the reason we use this is because it's one digit. Think of zero as the 10, that helps too. One through nine, and then you got zero, which is the 10th number. We just have one digit random number generation. Now, as I said, for the rules of this simulation, which I am creating, we are gonna have a 20% chance of winning the lottery or winning on a scratch off ticket. So let's choose two numbers. And usually we start at the beginning, like zero and one and call them winners. So zero and one is gonna be winners and two through nine is going to be losers. It means we don't win on the lottery ticket. Now, when you think about this, the way the simulation is created and listen to this very carefully, the way the simulation is created is we have a 20% chance of winning with any random number that is generated here. So the way the simulation is created, there's a 20% chance of winning. Now let's say the simulation questions on the test, and this is just an example of the many, many types of test questions we could write. Let's say the simulation question asks, you go out and we'll write it out here, that'll help. You go to the store and buy five scratch off tickets. Use the four trials below of this to see what is the probability they are all losers. So in this simulation, you have a 20% chance of winning. You are going to go to the store and buy five scratch off tickets and use the four trials of this. So there's gonna be 20 scratch off tickets bought in five clusters each to see what is the probability they are all losers. Be very careful to notice here that we have the probability of all losers is what we're looking at, not that the probability of losing. So let's look at a random number sequence being generated for us right here. These are random numbers. I do wanna point out these are not random numbers. I am coming up with these off the top of my head. These are not random numbers. Humans are not good random number generators. Uh, if you wanna generate random numbers, you need to use random number tables 
computers, random number generators such as dice, or uh, many, many different ways like dice, coins, something that can generate randomness. And computers are pretty good at generating randomness. We usually think of computers these days as pseudo random number generators, as in they are good enough, but we do acknowledge that computers are created by humans and humans are doing their best to be random, which is pretty hard to do. So we would need a real random number generation for this to be a real problem, but we'll use the numbers here and assume that these are random numbers. When we look at this, we immediately want to start converting these into winners and losers. And remember our table up here is going to help us out on knowing whether or not things are winners or losers. So let's take a look at the following and let's use green for winners and red for losers. Actually, let's use yellow, that might help out, for winners. So we have a winner here, winner here, winner here, and winner here. Now, the important thing to know about this question is we're not concerned with how many winners there are. We're just concerned with, were they all losers? And so hopefully right now you're figuring out the probability and what this question would want for an answer. The way this question is worded right now, what, what answer would we get for this? We've done four simulations below where we buy five lottery tickets. What is the probability that they're all losers? Taking a look at this right here with this small simulation, we would see one of the simulations right here. The other simulations have at least one winner. So in this example, the probability is one over four. Only 25% of the time, at least via this simulation, which is an estimate of what would occur, would we see all losers. And so this is not gonna be proof of it. It's just a very small simulation to estimate the probability of all losers. There's many, many ways to do simulations and we use simulations to look at real world events like buying lottery tickets or basketball games or flight simulators. All different things can be simulated. Statisticians use randomness as a tool. Practice the chapter, practice the homework. Good luck on the test.